but then he is not able to sort out within himself. Can you provide him this clarity where he can sort it out within himself? Right. So if you look at this, what is happening is that if you are in a state of happiness okay, and you want to forget about it because you are not able to cope up with it, right? you take to some means of this forgetfulness. So most of these addictions are essentially providing you some means no? for this forgetfulness. Right? So when you drink alcohol, right, you forget about what is happening within you, right? what kind of contradictions you are facing. Right? So that gives you a relief. Similarly, when you divert your attention, you know, by way of smoking a cigarette, right, it is giving you a relief because inside you are you know, so much in contradiction, so much of you know, tension that you want to divert. Otherwise, what is the help you get from cigarette? You are only smoking in right, a hot air right, and then taking it out. <coughs> What kind of exercises? <laughs> <laughs> but you feel relief. Why do you feel relief? Because you, your attention is giving diameter. Similarly, so this is what we are doing you know, by eating and eating, you know, by watching a TV serial. Right? So different people have different kind of divergence. Okay? And this all this diversion is for diverting your attention from your state of unhappiness, from state of tension, depression, and so on. Right. So the real help would be right, to help you to have the right understanding. Right. Right understanding and right feeling. And this only can make him happy. And if there is a state of happiness, then these things would not be required. Right? These diversions, right? In the form of drug, in the form of alcohol, in the form of cigarette, or in the form of watching TV series, right? They will not be required. Okay. In fact, you must have noticed in last four days, okay, we are having discussion about ourselves. Right. We are investigating into ourselves for almost eight hours a day. Right? Now, after eight hours of this you know, self-exploration in this classroom, when you get up, go out, right? you feel tired or you are still thinking in the terms of this exploration? <coughs> Why? Because this is something which is natural for you. Right? Something which is fulfilling for you. You might get little, you know, kind of upset because a lot of contradictions are seen within you and you know, that is upsetting you. But then you still want to continue with this process of exploration. So you don't need a diversion. You don't need to watch a TV or take to wine or any such thing. So if we help the other person <coughs> to have this right understanding and right feeling, okay, then that will be the real help. Right? Then you will not have to give him you know, this advice that don't drink okay, or don't take to drugs. Right? He also knows this as an idea, okay, not to drink, not to you know, take drugs, right, because it is not good for health. But he is taking to it because he thinks that the unhappiness that he has to face is more troublesome than spoiling the health of the body. And that is how he takes to the, the drugs and this wine and all these things. So the best thing to do is you know, to help him to have the right understanding and right feeling, which will make him happier. You know, if he is living you know, <coughs> happiness, then he would not require this kind of divergence. And I tell you, just taking to drugs and 
why, you know, it's not the only problem. Even watching TV serials, three hours, four hours, five hours, right? You are watching things which are of no concern to you. <laughs> why? Because you are trying to have some diversion. You are trying to divert yourself from your state of mind. Okay? And more there is tension, more TV you watch. Right? More, you know, tasty things you go to eat. So all those are also divergences of the same kind. Okay. Uh, when we are talking about the suffering and compassion, I said that my mind was stuck with an extreme incident. Somewhere in an issue or in a newspaper, I found out a man suffering from a physical and mental paralysis. <laughs> And having suffered this disease for so many years, and his wife or the relatives <coughs> somehow uh, went to court or uh, to the judicial system, asking them for uh, asking them for a permission to kill him or end his life because they couldn't or the doctors couldn't help him to bring out that uh, situation and even the victims uh, agreed to end himself but somehow the human law didn't allow them so finally the, the court has declared the verdict and then they killed that uh, man so in this uh, critical situation or ex extreme situation, what would be our stand or what would be your suggestion to sort such kind of uh, very critical situations? Because again, the other incidents that I heard from was one of my colleagues from the US. He said that if a if if the animal is suffering from any physical injury and if one finds it quite challenging to help them, then they shoot it and then kill it. That's one way of helping those uh, victims. So in this I was a little bit confused whether we are helping them or uh, and I really cannot make it into the words. That is the confusion that I am really going through. situation if you look around today is that because of the lack of right understanding, because of the lack of fulfillment in relationships, we are stuck with lot of problems. Right? That is the context. Okay? Now, given that context, the question is what do we do? Right? My answer is that given this context, we must help them to come out of their suffering. Right? But this is part one. Right? And this is a temporary part. Okay? This act to do when there is a problem. Right? 
the second part and which is the essential part and which has to be done every time and all the time is to find out the solution right? and work for the solution and make sure that this solution is passed on right, to the next generation or generation after generation so that if there is solution there is no problem. So that is the difference in approach. What we are saying that let us find out what is all encompassing solution for human being to live like human being. Okay. For the human being living with a human consciousness. Right? That is what we are trying to work out. Now, the fact that we are not living with human consciousness is giving rise to a large number of problems. So the problem due to human being living in human consciousness, I mean, animal consciousness, has created a whole lot of problems. Right? So there are problems, and we have to solve this problem. Okay? That is one part. But then, do we allow this problem to continue, and also, you know, keep working for the solution of this problem, or we find out the solution, right? For human being to live with human consciousness and try to work, you know, you know, to ensure this true <coughs> education in sanskar, generation after generation. So my response would be that if you look at it in the given context, we'll have to help people to get out of their suffering. But then we have to help people to get into the right understanding and right feeling. So that there is a continuity of this living with human consciousness. This is the solution. The problem has been there because we have not been working with this solution. So in absence of this solution, there is a problem. So we have to do something to come out of the problem. But then ultimately we have to work for the solution. And that is something which we have to do in the generation after generation. So I am not undermining this, you know kind of concern for the suffering, you know, concern for the problem that we have in the society, you know, and our you know, effort to come out of this, that's good. But then this is not going to be complete. Okay. With all that, what I need to do is to ensure right education in sanskar, okay, so that every human being is able to develop this right understanding, this right feeling, he is able to live with happiness and prosperity in himself and he is able to work for the happiness and prosperity of everyone else. So that is the approach, the difference in approach. Okay. Yeah, these four steps you know, which we keep mentioning is this. In fact, we discussed this in lot of detail in this anti corruption commission <coughs> workshop.
For example, when we were talking about this in the ACC, we asked them, what do you think? The corruption is the main problem or the inhuman conduct is the main problem? <coughs> If there is inhuman conduct, okay, then there will be exploitation. Right? And if there is exploitation, it might lead to corruption. So corruption is a symptom of the inhuman conduct. Right? Now what is the solution? To ensure human conduct. Now which is better? To ensure this human conduct in every child through education and sanskar, this is better. Or give any kind of education. Let there be human conduct. Let there be people who are thinking of exploiting others. Let there be people who are you know, getting corrupt. And then you try to stop corruption by very stringent measures. So we ask this people in ACC. Right? Which is better things to do? To work for this or to work for this? Okay. Main work will be this. In the meantime, if there are some problems, you take attend to that problem, right? Identify that problem, rectify that problem, all that is okay. But that cannot be the main, you know, concern of the society. This is the main concern of the society. So, then the chairperson of the ACC was saying that if this is done, okay, we'll become jobless. <laughs> the ACC will have no work. I said no. If this is understood, this will be the job of the ACC. <laughs> So you will not get unemployed. Right? You will get the right employment. So I think for the three and four, first to clean up the society. For now. For now. So keep on doing. Keep on doing uh, one and two so that you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, temporarily you have to do, this is fine. <coughs> but this is what we need to do in the long term. This is what is necessary. The unfortunate thing is that you are focusing on this and not doing anything on it. So what is happening? You are solving some, solving some problems, right? But more problems is created every day. So I am saying to take care of both. Solve the problem, but make sure that these problems are not created anymore. Otherwise what will happen? You will keep on cleaning and everybody will start, you know, keep throwing the garbage, right? So you must ensure that the garbage is not thrown, right? And then remain, you know, clean the remaining ones. Anyway, my, you know, as I said, these are all proposals for you <coughs> to think, right? <laughs> if you still think that three, four is what you have to do, I think you My job is very simple. <laughs> okay. So with this, I think I'll come back to this. Discussion on harmony in society. If I look at this, we have said that as a human being, we desire for happiness and prosperity and for continuity of the truth. And in order to ensure continuity of happiness, 
Right? As to ensure understanding the harmony and living in harmony at all levels of our existence, that is starting from the individual to family to society to nature and existence. Okay? So we have started our discussion on harmony in individual, then we have talked about harmony in family. Now I want to go to our discussion on harmony in society. So let me put forward the proposal for this harmony in society and you start investigating into it. <coughs> so regarding this harmony in society, I have written down these two things. One is, I have written down you know, the human goal for human being living in society. So first thing is to identify the goal of human being, right, living in society. Second is to decide for the human system, right, which can ensure the fulfillment of this human goal. <coughs> right. So this is what we need to understand. Right? Number one, we need to understand what do we want to achieve in the society. Right? So when we look at ourselves living in society, we need to understand what is it that we want as human beings living in society. Number two, we also want to understand what is it that we need to do in order to ensure the fulfillment of this human goal. That is, what is going to be our human system to ensure the fulfillment of this human goal. So, let me propose this and then you verify for yourself. So, when I look at the human goal, I can identify these four as the basic human goal for human being living in society. First is right understanding and right feeling in every individual. You ask yourself, whether you want to ensure right understanding and right feeling in every individual or you think that some people have the right understanding and right feeling and other becomes the follower. <laughs> what is your natural acceptance? So right understanding and right feeling in every individual. And that is what would lead to happiness. So this happiness in every individual, which means right understanding and right feeling in every individual. Is that required? Yes. Second, prosperity in every family. So what do you want? Prosperity in every family or some people have lot of legal facility accumulated. Right? And they are feeling deprived. And the other families are having, you know, lack of physical facility. What is your natural acceptance? Prosperity in every family? Yes. The third is fearlessness, trust in society. We want fear in the society or fearlessness in the society? Yes. Fearlessness. Then the fourth is coexistence in nature in existence. So what is your natural acceptance? To ensure coexistence in nature or exploitation of the rest of nature? Coexistence in nature. So now you can see whether all four of them are required, okay, for you or you can do away with any one of them. So see whether all four are required. <coughs> 